Yeah, Ronnie, welcome to the uh, Barnum Overview mm -hmm. Strategic Committee. Um, my name is Philip Reichel, I'm the chair of this committee. Uh, to my left and right are the officers, um, and the surrounding tables are the members of this committee proper. Um, let's maybe start straight away and ask if there's any declarations of interest. Third set of minutes for Wednesday the 9th of November, that was the uh, special meeting. Yeah. I was deputised with Councillor Tom Anderson. Okay, we'll that amendment put in. Is anyone else any problems in minutes? No? That's fine.
think I think the other two committees have, have expressed similar sentiments on it wasn't there. I think it, in line with what you said, Chair, I think we should uh, you know either agree or simply note and and put forward further reports. This has been discussed at council. We wouldn't have had it going to the two committees. And also, we've been more time for the issues, as Steve says, at the time, time, a week, two weeks can be a massive change or something like this. So, we certainly discussed it. It's been discussed at two other committee meetings. Folks have discussed it with the chair. An awful lot of the If we'd have done it in council instead of it being referred by the mayor, perhaps we wouldn't have so much work done last week. I'm not going to respond to that because I don't think I mean, in, in, in defence of the procedures that we followed, it perhaps having us referred to every committee about some more detailed consideration if we were minded to do so. It just happened to be the case in this instance. This appears to have come after the fact. But there we go. Uh, if no one else has anything else to add, no. I suggest that we resolve um, the notice motion to be supported uh, and that further meeting of the um, overview scrutiny committee chairs, vice chairs, and spokespeople will be welcomed.
matters at locations around the board where we monitor the numbers. So I think um, if, if that's not the case, I'll come back and, and correct that. I'm, I'm pretty certain that's the way that we, uh, we measure that indicator. Uh, and I think really you made a very good point around sometimes on, I mean, the, the dog fouling uh, pitch penalty measures is a really good example whereby it's shown as a red, we've, we've got a certain number there, but actually um, if in time we get compliance from people and we do achieve behaviour change, then actually if anything you'd like to think the number would start to come down. So I think we do need to be just sensitive to some of these points as we go along. I think so I agree with that. Thank you. Chris? It's a, it's a very valid point. I think the, the commentary is, is making a reference to the fact that um, the feedback we're getting is the people that we have on the ground are witnessing uh, certainly more people actually picking up, the, uh, pick it, picking up their, their dog mess and that behaviour change seems to be happening. It, it's certainly, uh, you know, certainly the feedback that we're getting from uh, intelligence from a variety of sources, it can be through uh, customer complaints, inquiries, uh, it can also be from uh, our contractor Biffer out there on the ground providing the street cleansing service, they also provide feedback into the team around hot spots for littering and dog fouling and things like that.
is absolutely right. So around schools, typical hotspot location where we do have issues. It's a good example where uh, if the system's working, then when we get feedback from members, we get feedback from, from the contractor, from the constituency managers, people on the ground around where those hotspots are. So um, we'll target them in terms of cleansing. We try and make sure that there's litter bins there at those kind of locations. We do pass that kind of intelligence on to uh, Kingdom, our contractor, to actually be taking uh, enforcement action. So that's the kind of stuff that we're doing on the ground. Very importantly, um, there used to be a local environmental quality measure that all local authorities were required to work to. Uh, it, was a, it was a central government measure requirement until a few years ago. That requirement isn't there any longer. Many authorities have stopped routinely measuring standards of environmental quality. First of all, Will Council is one of the fewer the number of councils that still actively goes out there doing street cleaning <coughs> surveys and actually measuring that. And actually, as the report talks about, you know, the performance is actually very good. So we're one of the authorities that really takes the whole agenda around standards of environmental quality and cleanliness very, very seriously.
especially that we're up for a national award, you know, because of what we do. So we, we must be doing something right. So, you know, I'm here to, to, to just support the officers and support yourselves with everything that we need to do. We need to do it in all. Bruce, you'll know that if there's a problem, we'll send a team into, because uh, we did it exactly in, in Morton just recently. If you have a problem, you have to report it in. Once it's reported in, the team will go out and the team will do their very, very best to help out. So it's, it's not as simple when there's loads of litter outside school. It's not as simple as just sending the team in because we can't enforce it or we can't approach people from the age of 18. So. I've, I've, I've got to say, I've got an acquaintance who was caught uh, for dropping a cigarette, uh, but a few days ago he texted me uh, outraged and I informed him he shouldn't drop it. So it's doing, it's doing some good there. Um, just sorry, Bernie, I, I appreciate the work you weren't here to answer questions, but my point actually was that of those cases that go to court, Council was winning 70% of them, so 30% are being lost. My question was whether or not that was incurring costs to the council. Because um, I'm mindful, given that Kingdom are contracted to do this, they could be giving out unsafe fines, and if that's causing a, a problem to the council. Well, I'm sure Mark will pick that up and he'll bring, look into that and bring, if, 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 if okay. the committee won't be bringing the call back to find out exactly where that is. Yeah, Steve. Uh, this is exactly uh, where you have the difficulty of what indicator is and you like to see a figure so you, you launch yourself into the figures and uh, I think all the indicators really are for us to do is to guide us where we have concerns and where we believe the perception of the public is different to what the figures are saying. That's the role of our, our job as community. It's certainly not our job to have our own little ward members here. Uh, I would discourage that if we, if we could have a good well, map. So, so, so you know clearly clearly we need to we need to you know represent the whole of the, the council. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, because we could all do that. I think there's other mechanisms. But what I'm trying to pull out from the officers is, there seems to be, once we get the indicators, that they will guide us in a certain way, for either a small piece of work, or even a report to us so we can convey that. I think you mentioned about weeds, um, Chair. I mean, we had an excellent presentation at Beckham Constituency Committee about why the weed problem is the way it is. It, it, I won't go into the detail, but it's certainly knowledge we should all have, certainly as the, the scrutinizers of that, that, that service. So I'm just thinking, you know, the, the, the information Bruce has got about the charging mechanism and how we do it, I think that would be useful to all of us. So if you, 